cataractcoach.com. We've got a cataract quiz. What does this tell you? Look carefully at the picture, right at the arrow. What is that? Let me show you the case here. We'll speed it up for the beginning. I want to show you it's a normal rexus. So this is the incision made with a diamond. Here we're measuring out. We want a five millimeter rexus. This video is again sped up a little bit just to show you there's no wrinkling of the bag. There's good support. Everything looks normal. The rexus doesn't run out. We're able to create that five millimeter rexus. Let's measure it. Boom, five millimeters. Okay, let's get to the end here. Nucus is being removed and everything looks totally normal. I'm having a totally normal case here. Looks great. Okay, everything's fine, right? Last little piece is coming out. All right, come out of the eye. That, look at that. I noticed that. You see it, right? I noticed this immediately after it came out of the eye. That's the capsular bag equator, and it's visible, which means that quadrant has no xylar support. That's a big deal, and that needs to be recognized anytime you see it. So now go in now with the, the eye probe, and let's do the cortex removal away from that area. Don't start at that area. So we're going to, on your screen here, you know that zonular weak area is about like the 10 o'clock position, right? So we'll start here at 12, that's okay. And I'll go over here to 1, 2, 3 o'clock. Let's remove cortex. Let's be very cautious here. You need to be extra cautious in the area of zonular loss because you can zip and break more zonules just like uh, when you pull on it, it'll, you'll detach it even more. So right now it's a small defect, maybe two or three clock hours. You can make it six or eight or 10 clock hours if you're not careful. So we're going very slowly here to remove cortex, nice and easy. And again, I'm doing it in the areas away from the zonular loss. So nice and easy, the pieces come up. And again, look how slowly I'm taking it. Now we're coming, coming near that area. Oh, there's the equator again, so let's not touch that. Let's try get some of the cortex here. And as I start to pull it, I'm still feeling like, oh, there's that equator again. I don't wanna keep pulling here, so what do I need? I need some counter traction. That's what we need. So let's put a spatula or some other instrument in the eye or chopper, something to gently retract and hold the capsule. Now you can put a capsule retraction hook in as well, but you can just use your spatula. Let me show you how I do that. So again, to, in order, before I pull this off, then let's give counter traction against that rexus and slowly, very slowly peel that off. There it is. And again, counter traction against the rexus with the spatula, so I can use that IA probe and gently remove that cortex. That looked pretty good. And once I've done that, let's not be too much of a perfectionist. Let's back flush that a little bit. We can wash those down. We can always come back and take out that last little bit. So that little bit's okay. That's easy enough to remove after we get a CTR in. Remember the saying for CTR is, put it in as early as you need it, but as late as you can. There's the cohesive viscoelastic filling of the capsule bag. Now the bag's inflated. Look how he didn't pull out of the eye with the IA probe until we filled it with viscoelastic. Now you got a nice expanded bag, and it'll stay looking pretty good like this until we remove the viscoelastic. So now let's get a CTR in the eye. Here's the CTR method I like, using a, a hook here, a Sinsky hook, to capture that leading eyelet and dial it in. Let me show you how we do that. You got it. This is a very gentle way of doing it. You can use other methods as well. So here comes the CTR in the injector. I'll advance it a little bit just to expose that leading eyelet. There it is. Hold that with the Sinsky hook. And now deliver, deliver, deliver. And look, it's not touching the bag until now. And that's very gentle. And now at the end here, we can let go of both of those, push it off the tip of this, this hook, and take it off the injector as well. There it is, completely in the capsule bag. Now you've got a sufficient degree of support here. Now put a little more viscoelastic. Let's get that IOL in the capsule bag. Now you can put any lens you want here. One a good option like this is to put in a single piece acrylic lens. Some people would say, no, put a three-piece lens, haptics in the, uh, in the sulcus, capture the optic behind the rexus. Yeah, that works too. That'll help, help prevent some phimosis. But I think we'll be fine here. This patient has a nice CTR in position, and that's really helping to bolster the capsule bag and give it some good support. And so we no longer will see that capsule bag equator when we do our procedures here. Here comes the lens being delivered in the capsule bag. A little bit of a higher power of this patient is a hyperope. And so we get that injected into the capsule bag and let's dial that in. Now, since you already have a CTR, it doesn't really matter the exact orientation of this IOL. If you were gonna put, let's say, a three-piece lens in the bag, but no CTR, you'd wanna orient the haptics 
at the area of zonal weakness so that each haptic that's in the bag can act as a bolster and push that back. But a CTR is my, my favorite option here. Going behind the IOL, remove Miss Scholastic, but look behind the posterior capsule. What do you see? Okay, we're getting out the little lens fragments that were kind of stuck behind the iris. No problem. But what do you see behind the posterior capsule? Oh, there are little tiny bits of lens fragment, right? Yeah, those went through the area of zonal loss, that gap. They went through that gap while we were breaking up the cataract and emulsifying it. And so those you're not going to be able to get out very easily. So my advice is leave them alone. They're not going to cause much issue. There may be a little bit more inflammation in the post-op period, but they'll melt away in that inflammatory cascade. Here, that was less than ideal. I don't want to have the AC collapse like that, so let's refill it. I'll, I'll, we'll double check to make sure there's no vitreous prolapse. So let's get that incision sealed up. An option here would have been to do some sealing of that incision prior to placing the IA probe when you're evacuating viscoelastic. So now the lens looks pretty darn good. It's set it up nicely, overlapped by the optic for 360. The rex looks pretty round. That one area looks supported. So here, let's take a still shot there and look. So yeah, well-centered lens, rex is overlapping 360. Capture bag is well-supported now with the CTR in place. Everything looks pretty good. Now let's just make sure that there's no vitreous prolapse, right? Just in case. There could have been with all those maneuvers some vitreous prolapse. So here's some Triumph Synlone, preservative-free. Inject that in the AC. No staining. So knock on wood. Got a nice result there with no vitreous prolapse either. That anti-inflammatory effect is also going to be helpful in the post-op period as this patient may have a little bit additional inflammation due to those tiny retained lens fragments in the anterior hyaloid face. So there's the normal IOP. Everything looks good. Let's put some uh, sponge on here with a little bit of tetracaine to help anesthetize the eye. And you know why? We're going to do a limbal relaxed concision. So just because it's a challenging case doesn't mean the patient doesn't deserve a beautiful refractive outcome. So let's do a little LRI to account for about 0 0.5, 0 0.6 diopters of astigmatism. Notice we also placed the main phaco incision on that steep axis. Here's the diamond to make a one clock hour LRI. And that looks fantastic. So next time you see that critical sign, capsule bag equator, wow, now you know exactly what to do.